So I've already selected that part before, and I'm bringing that whole uh, mouth down so the upper la a lip uh, matches. And if I remember correctly, I'm going to deselect this bit. Um, Any time now. Come on. Here we go. There we go. Now I'm deselecting the upper lip by holding the Alt key. Oh, sorry, this is key. Sorry. So a lot of you people are new to Blacksmith 3D. The uh, selection workflow is the same as uh, other programs like Photoshop, where um, if you have a selection tool, any one of these, right? See, this marquee is the most familiar because you get that in Photoshop. Uh, where, okay, if you make a selection and then uh, and let it go, and then and then if you do another one, it erases the previous selection in favor of the new one. <laughs> now, if you want to add to that selection, so if you want to select a little bit over here, and then you want to select a bit more over here, you hold the shift key, and that adds to the current selection so it doesn't clear what's there. And alternatively, if you hold the alt key, and then you start you know, using the selection tool over a selected area, it'll act as an eraser. You know, remove that selection from it. So that's what I was doing here. I'm holding the alt key, and I'm erasing the upper lip, leaving the lower lip selected. Here we go. And the purpose of this is to use this, this move deformance, move hammer, and then slide that lip up. And so it's mostly closed, leaving a little bit of a gap. And again, we're not aiming for perfection here. What we're doing is we're just getting the general shape of those photo references in the model so we can easily transfer those textures over. And just as a side note, that this is the second life of a female avatar. And with that being said, this morph cannot be imported into Second Life because at this time, they don't support any kind of um, morph imports that I know about. If any of you know, out there have any information on the contrary, please post in the comments section. I'm a total noob to Second Life. I'm just getting used to everything. Um, but uh, so, but <coughs> you can adjust the sliders if you like in Second Life to somewhat match this, or you can have a completely different shape. It doesn't matter. Once this texture is down, you can reshape this face any way you want, and the, the texture will be in the right places uh, while maintaining a different shape. And for the most cases, it'll look just fine. The only time when doing uh, dramatically changing the shape will make the texture not look good is if you have some really straight lines and edges, and then they tend to get all bent out of shape. Um, so, but in this case, you, there's not, there's not going to be any uh, sort of um, harsh detail like that. So, uh, changing the shape afterwards is not going to be a big of an issue. And again, we see here, uh, doing the same sort of adjustments as we did for the mouth for the eye. I'm selecting there, and I just uh, held the Alt key to remove some of the selection. Hit S key. Don't forget that S key. This S key is gold. Oh. I'm going to show you this. Wait, wait. Uh, uh, here we go. Okay. Select, 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 and then... There, wait. Okay. Sorry, right. um, this thing's not very, there it is. Hit that S key, look how smooth this is. So what this means is that when I use one of these, these uh, tools down here, these hammers, okay, these, these transformations, is that the blue stuff up here is gonna not move at all. The red stuff's gonna move a little more, then a little more, then a lot more. So the result is a nice, organic, smooth uh, transformation, okay? So let's go back. And here we go. I'm moving that eye into shape. Everything's looking fine. Now, okay, I'm this is the rotate view tool. And this is the zoom. So what am I doing? Okay, um, I'm just going to, okay. W sorry, just let me catch up with myself here and figure out what I'm doing. Please forgive me. I'm recording this in a single pass. So um, it'll, as such, it will be less than perfect, but that's okay. I'm sure you'll forgive me because I'll be doing a lot of videos this way. A lot of imperfect videos are gonna be better than a few perfect ones. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm using these, uh, the bold chisel here in an attempt to sort of, uh, sort of um, do an anti-bulge, whoops, uh, anti-bulge um, by holding the Alt key. So if I use one of these tools and I hit the Alt key, you, go, you generally go the opposite direction. So. Um, but I seem to be in a little bit of a, a little trick, like a, something's going on here that I can't quite figure out at this time. And what happens is that um, I'm pretty sure if I remember what I'm doing. Okay, I, I decided to change gears for a moment. Uh, let me show you what was happening here just for a moment. 
I was using uh, the bulge tool, the bulge chisel, and where are we? I was using the bulge chisel, and not much was happening. That's because, look, here, pause. Uh, actually, we are paused. Okay, pose smooth is set to 50%. Now, this basically means is that when I'm using one of these chisels, every little motion I do, it's going to do a transformation. It's going to bulge. It's going to do something. But then immediately after, it's going to do a little smoothing operation, right? a little pose smooth. <clears throat> now, this is at 50%. Now, it, depending on the model you're using, um, this value should be changed. You see this is a pretty low polygon model. And so what happens is a 50% post smooth generally tends to smooth out whatever it is that you did. So you might have bulged out a little bit, and the smooth will just pop it right back into place. Or so, you know. so if you have a low res model, you want a lower mo uh, value of this. Um, and if it's a higher res, then it can then a higher value of that post smooth it can can work really well. So in this case, um, I just because I didn't quite click in that that was what's going on. So then I decided to switch gears and use a, this uh, selection and hammer workflow. That is, I select a bit and then I use um, then I use a, a bulge uh, like a hammer. Which is, see, I'm going to select that nostril and. Then I'm going to choose um, whatever, if I remember correctly, the uh, the move hammer. And yes, and then I'm going to adjust that into place. And I'm going to go from the front here, and I'm going to sort of pull it up. And at this point, I think I'm going to realize, hey, nothing's happening. Why is nothing happening? It's not, you know, it's the post smooth. There I am. All right, so let's lower that number down. Let's bring that down to nine percent. See, now things are happening a little more. See, now it's, I'm doing something, and I'm getting a response. So that's good. There's so many subtle details in a software like this where the, you, know, you add all these advanced features, and it's easy to get confused. I designed and programmed the software, and I still get confused in once in a while. So uh, don't feel bad. Just, uh, you know, just get used to what every little thing does. I'll try to put it more in videos and try to pass on my, my knowledge to you. And all should be good. So here I'm using the move tool again to sort of take that whole nostril area and put it into place.